Hi. Um, I'm pretty uncomfortable. I think I might be in labor. I'm having contractions about every 10 minutes. Okay. Come follow me. We'll take some information from you. Ideally, if you think you need to come to labor and delivery, either because you're in labor or even perhaps because you have a scheduled cesarean section, um, the team will know ahead of time that you're coming um, and will be prepared for you when you arrive on the unit. The first thing it is done is that you're greeted um, on labor and delivery. Um, you often have to give uh, some information, again, about who you are, why you're there. Um, you'll be greeted uh, by a nurse uh, who will do an initial assessment to make sure both you and your baby are stable. Hi, Ms. Joe. Hi. Yeah. How are you? My name is Tori. I'll be your nurse. Nice to meet you, Tori. Thank you, right? Yes. May I have a look at your name? I'm sure. Great. And that's the correct spelling of your name? Yes. And your date of birth is correct? Yes. During your evaluation in triage, if it is determined that you are going to be admitted to the hospital, uh, usually you'll be asked to uh, put on a hospital gown. Um, often an IV will be placed and bloods will be drawn uh, just to be prepared for any potential emergency that may occur during your labor and delivery. We always monitor both mom's vital signs as well as the fetal heart rate to ensure that both mom and baby are tolerating labor. Uh, and if you're a low-risk patient where everything is very stable, this monitoring can be intermittent so you can be up and around and walking on the unit uh, and to have, in order to have the most uh, natural labor and delivery that you would like to have. During your labor, your nurse really is your go-to person. She's the person that's going to be with you more than anybody apart from your birth partner. Um, your nurse may have more than one patient, so she might not be in your room the entire time, but it's important to remember that thanks to our centralized monitoring systems, all of our nursing staff will be able to see both your vital signs and tracing of your baby's heart rate along with your uterine activity from multiple points across the unit. We try to give you continuity to have the same nurses throughout. However, apart from your nurse, you will also meet your obstetrician. It is important to remember with your obstetrician that you may not be delivered by your primary obstetrician. Sometimes one of their colleagues may deliver you, especially if they work as part of a practice. What we've been able to build here is actually pretty unique, uh, certainly in New York, if not in the whole country, in that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have a subspecialty obstetric anesthesiologist uh, on the labor and delivery floor. So supervising the anesthesia care, then of course some is delivered by residents and fellows, but there's a subspecialty trained attending obstetric anesthesiologist here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's part of what I've done as the, the chief of the division. I'm Dr. Smiley, I'm the anesthesiologist here today. I just wanted to come, uh, Dr. Smith told me you had uh, just arrived. I figured I'd come say hello and sort of check you in, if you will, from the anesthesia point of view, okay? okay. You may or may not want anesthesia or pain relief for labor, but either way, we like to see everyone and at least make sure we know who's here, okay? okay. Is that right? Yeah. About 80 or 85 percent of the patients here in labor get uh, pain relief from an anesthesiologist. So. I guess the first answer is, well, most women do, so it wouldn't be a terrible decision to do that. But certainly some don't. They just decide not to, and you can make the decision as you go along. But I'd say most women get seen by an anesthesiologist within an hour or two of arriving on the labor and delivery suite. I'd say a approximately 50% of the women who come in here in labor and delivery know or think they know that they want an epidural, and that's what they tell us, that you know, I'm going to want pain relief in labor. And the other half are, are much more undecided, usually are waiting to see how the labor goes. And of them, two-thirds of them usually get, get an epidural at some point. We have women who come and, or don't decide on an epidural till they're eight centimeters or fully dilated even, and we are, we're able to provide pain relief for them quite well. It is very clear now that having or not having an epidural for pain relief in labor does not change the risk of a C-section or significantly speed up or slow down labor. The other issue that's related is that many women were told, and frankly, at many places are still told, that they need to be a certain number of centimeters dilated before they're allowed to have an epidural, because if they get an epidural too early, supposedly that will slow the labor. Again, in the last decade, many studies have been done very well that have shown that's simply not true, that a properly performed epidural, especially using moderately low doses, as we use here, has no effect on labor progress, no matter when it's done. A traditional epidural, will let, will take about 10, 15 minutes to really kick in and relieve the labor pain. We have techniques now uh, that can work within two or three or four minutes and that work particularly well in late labor when traditional epidurals take long, 
an even longer time to work. Those usually involve injection of medication into the spinal fluid um, and are called combined spinal epidurals or just spinal anesthetics. Uh, and we do a lot of that here. Here we go. Okay, so make sure you take some nice deep breaths. Okay. okay. Try your best to relax. Maybe I'll even just put your head down slightly. Typically, the obstetrician comes in to uh, see the expectant mom in the labor room um, after they've been admitted and all of the admission procedures are completed. You typically will see your provider or one of their partners uh, when you're in the active phase of labor. Prior to that point, you may be taken care of by one of our resident physicians who are basically our eyes and ears when, we're at, when you're at the hospital. After the baby is delivered, um, the parents will have an opportunity to spend some time with their baby. Um, there will be an opportunity to bond and initiate breastfeeding if that's something that they care to do. Um, there's also an opportunity for the nurse to evaluate the baby and um, perform some routine procedures. The baby will be weighed, uh, we have a vitamin K injection that's administered, and also an eye ointment that's placed as routine for all deliveries. If the pediatrician is also present at the time of the delivery, they'll be the first ones to evaluate the baby in that first uh, newborn exam. Their baby will then be transferred to the postpartum unit. This is done once the nurse has determined that the um, baby is stable and ready to go down to the uh, postpartum unit, which is actually on a different floor from our labor and delivery unit. Once the baby is ready to be transferred to the nursery, your partner can escort the baby to the newborn nursery which is located on a different floor. Once you're stable and ready to be transferred to the postpartum unit, you are then brought down and you'll be reunited with your baby. We make every effort to keep this period of separation between you and your baby brief. Private rooms are allocated on a first-come, first-served basis depending on availability at the time of your delivery. Visitors, they're only allowed two at a time, mainly because we're trying to be respectful to the other um, person who is in the room with you. Significant others are not allowed to stay over at night as there isn't a space to accommodate that. All staff are trained to assist new moms in learning to look after their newborn. That includes breastfeeding, diaper changing, swaddling, and anything else that we, the mom would need to know to look after her newborn. Nurses round hourly on new moms to assure that um, everything is going well for her. They will ask her about how she's feeling to ensure that her pain is being relieved and also they'll want to know if she's bonding with baby and whether baby is feeding and suckling it sufficiently. Babies are like people who have their own personalities and so you just take the time to get to know your own newborn and you'll have a wonderful, wonderful time.